Welcome to the Cinemagic Preview Show. On this edition, we will be reviewing the historical drama Memories of My Father. Enseñar, he enseñado bien poco. Si acaso siempre pretendí enseñar a pensar con libertad. Fuiste el primero que se atrevió a hablar de salud pública en este país. A partir de este momento, eres imprescindible para el futuro de este país. Por las manos, te llevas a la boca todas las bacterias recogidas durante el día. Tú y yo sabemos que si Dios de verdad existe, a él no le va a preocupar si lo adoramos o no. que nunca he entendido mi posición profesional como renuncia a mis derechos de ciudadano y a la libre expresión de mis ideas y opiniones. Los paramilitares están haciendo lo que se les antoja, como una fuerza de choque que pretende doblegarnos. En este país la vida vale muy poco. Que nadie estaría preocupado por vos si no fuera porque todos conocemos lo peligroso de tu compromiso en estos momentos. Mira, yo nunca me he arrodillado ante nadie, pero solo me arrodillo ante mis rosas. más los problemas de los demás que los de tu propia familia. Ningún problema, solo de los demás. What do our young Cinemagic reviewers think? Hello, my name is Rosa Scott and welcome to the Cinemagic Preview Show. On this edition, we'll be reviewing the film Memories of My Father. This feature explores the relationship between a young boy and his father over the course of 1970s and early 80s in Medellin, Colombia. And it explores how this relationship strengthens in the uh, former's childhood as his father becomes quite a noticeable figure in the community for his work as a doctor and eventually as a social justice campaigner. Memories of My Father is an absolutely beautiful film that is told from the perspective of a son of an activist, a doctor and a teacher uh, within Colombia. It's an absolutely beautiful story, very inspirational, that explores kind of themes of, of morals and religion and what truly guides us as human beings to be kind and to acknowledge the suffering of the people around us. This film will resonate with viewers, I think, very deeply because not only does it offer a look at a very noticeable and uh, highly esteemed figure uh, in the community in Hector Abel Gomez, but also it gives a very personal touch in the way it tracks his relationship with his family and most notably his son throughout the film. Um, it's just over two hours but it really encapsulates so many different elements of uh, their relationship over the course of the picture. If I am going to mention one thing about this film it will be how the cinematography is absolutely astounding. Every single shot is beautiful and every scene is perfect. It is a really brilliantly crafted film. This film makes incredible use of very unique shots and unique framing such as um, one shot where the young boy is looking through a rolled up magazine and watching his family move about the house. This point of view shot really stood out to me as I thought it was a wonderfully unique way of framing that didn't feel too creatively intrusive on the realism of family life. A really cute moment from actually near the beginning of the film was when the camera is looking through a little homemade tube as if it's a telescope and we are actually put into the son's shoes and we're running around the house almost as if we are him and we're playing and and um, seeing the world, his house, his family from his perspective. And that was a really great initiation to the son's position in life and where he is and how he feels. And I feel like that was a really great way to get the audience fully invested in, in the son and 
kind of wanting to um, get to know him better almost. I really enjoyed that. One scene in particular which stood out to me from the entire film was um, when the young boy is using a voice recorder machine to narrate his life and what is happening back to his father who has just had to flee. And this voiceover is accompanied by a number of tracking shots, a number of beautiful shots showing the family doing what the young boy is describing. And I think just the dynamic movement and the like clean transitions between each shot as they flow almost into one another was beautiful. It really resonated with me. It was a fantastically creative piece. It's got a very interesting aesthetic in that the scenes that are set in the 1970s are in colour beautifully shot, while the sequences which take place in the 1980s are in black and white. And this is a very interesting choice on Final Trailer's part, but I think it works really well. It's kind of a decision you wouldn't necessarily expect for a, a biographical film like this, but I think it's very effective. Something that I really enjoyed about this film were the different colour schemes that were explored. Initially we were dropped into this black and white kind of presentation and that's quite strange especially you know it's kind of like a classic movie from Schindler's List that black and white presentation of someone's life and then we jump back to the 70s and that awesome classic 70s colour scheme pops up and you just it's so beautiful the lovely oranges blues greens browns that really strangely come together even though they're quite abstract and due to the fact that the 70s were kind of the son's childhood, we can understand why they chose that such bright colour scheme. You know, when you're a kid, everything's bright and lovely and beautiful. Then suddenly something very emotional, drastic happens. And there, are, there is a minute where you can kind of see the colour drain a little bit from the screen. It gets darker, it gets slightly smudgier. And then it goes into black and white in the 80s. And it just shows that how when something truly terrible happens to you that often the colour can be drained from your life and it can really take a toll on you and your perspective. So I thought that was absolutely beautifully done. One thing that stood out to me in particular was how the beginning of the film was in black and white and then it suddenly shifted the colour later on as we go back to the boy's childhood and see his colourful, vibrant life with his father and how much he adored him and how later on the film returns to black and white and loses its colour. Focusing in on the colourful scenes, I feel like it is the vibrancy crafted in each of these scenes that shows just how wonderful their family life was and how much each of the children adore their father. This colour displays the warmth and the love within this family and how genuine their relationships are, as well as allowing each of the children to have their own personalities. Something I also absolutely adored about this film was how every single character was their own individual. Sometimes that's forgotten in films, you know, kind of a background character, like a sibling who you don't see very often. They don't really have much of a personality. They may say one witty line, but it doesn't really tell you anything about them. This film, every single little character had something about them that was truly individual. Every single sibling, you, you could tell the difference between all the sisters, even though they were all very similar. They all had their own little kind of personalities through the way they dressed, through the way they held themselves, through the topics of discussion that they were involved in. I just thought it was so brilliantly done. Overall, I think this is a very um, moving film. It celebrates a figure who such a kindred spirit as we come to learn throughout the film. His uh, dynamic with his son in particular is really striking and very impactful. It's humorous but also very, very poignant. And yeah, I think this film will really um, strike a chord with a lot of viewers emotionally. So I think Memories of My Father is definitely worth seeking out. Although I knew nothing about society in Colombia before watching this film, I was still able to really enjoy and understand it as well. And I would recommend this film to anybody who loves genuinely, beautifully crafted cinema because this film is... I would almost call this film a masterpiece. It is beautifully created and I really enjoyed every single second. Overall, I really enjoyed this film. It was beautiful and easy to watch and the character development really encouraged you to get involved and care for the characters and attempt to understand them in a certain way. I was worried initially when I started watching the film. I thought, oh goodness, I'm going to have to do a bit of research in Colombian society and try and figure out where this film is coming 
coming from but I didn't need to because this film gives you the perfect amount of information that you need to understand where the characters are coming from without giving you information overload. It showed you the unrest, it showed you the poor welfare and the struggle that poor people were going through not having clean water, not having vaccinations and I thought that was so brilliantly done. It was easy to watch and really enjoyable and I hope you enjoy it too. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.